What's up guys? Welcome back to a new video. Excuse my very, very tired face, but it is 7.31am and I'm shooting this uh, intro because I just came back home to shoot the images that you just saw. So over the past few months, I've actually been very obsessed with creating a very cinematic and very film retro look. And today I'm revealing my secrets on how I get there using DaVinci Resolve 18. Right before we get into the video, it will mean the world to me if you go down there and click that little subscribe button if you find any of this information useful. Let's get into the video. I would also like to specify that there are so many ways in DaVinci that you can reach this film retro cinematic look. This is only one and this is only my way of doing things. I'm not saying this is right, I'm not saying this is wrong. I just find that this is a very good way of doing this and it's easy and it's fast. So. Let's get into it. So the first and most important tip I'm gonna give you right now, fastening seat belts, is that you have to shoot accordingly. You can't just shoot whatever you're shooting and then expect it to look retro, just adding color grading. That's not how it works. You have to shoot accordingly. And one of the biggest things that I use and I have it on my camera right now is a Tiffin Black Pro Mist filter, which basically takes the highlights and just blooms it nicely and does the same for skin tones. The one I have on right now is a 1 8th, which is just a little bit of strength. You can get it 1 4th and I think this one second as well, but those are way too strong. It's just your image is going to look too soft and too fake looking so I like the 1 8 and I recommend the 1 8 just because you can put it on your lens and pretty much never take it off the lens and aside from that the film retro look is not really perfectly stable perfectly stabilized so definitely throw away that gimbal and leave that little micro shakes into your videos another very very important tip is that you have to shoot at the right time and what I mean by that is you should shoot around sunrise or sunset to get that <coughs> <coughs> my voice oh my god as i was saying you have to shoot in golden hour to have that beautiful glow beautiful golden look into your videos that will help the color grading i love to shoot a sunrise and i love to shoot a sunset just because i like to backlit pretty much everything and get, get a little glow around the, the subject or shoot right up the sky which is going to be hopefully blue sky which is going to look very nice once you grade it because it's not like a blown out blue it's like a perfect kind of color so definitely definitely try and shoot at golden hour if you can all right as i said before this is not probably the best way to do these things but it's the way that i find to be the fastest and is the way that i enjoy doing things so try following along and if you take something out you take something out I hope you do. So first thing first, we're going to create all of the nodes that we're going to need in our color grading. So we have primaries, we have color space transform, then we have colors, then we have our array conversion, then we have a look, and then finally we have our halation and glow. The first thing we're going to tackle is the color space transform. We're just going to add the effect onto this node and we're going to transform our S-Log3 to our Rec 709 footage. Then we're going to jump into primaries and adjust and balance the image out the way we like it. I usually do this by desaturating a little bit just because I find that CST to add a little bit too much saturation. And then after that, I'm going to play around with the log wheels to adjust the highlights and the shadows. Then we jump into the colors and here there is so many ways of adjusting your colors and fixing the hue of your colors. I've been actually liking the color warper lately, so let's use that. And then we're gonna use a bit of a color wheels. But basically, all you're gonna do in this step, it's taking your oranges and move it a little bit to your yellow, and then taking your blues, desaturate it, and move it a little bit to the teal. Then, if there is any green in your image, I also like to desaturate that too. You can play around, but this is usually the main adjustments that I do here. Then again, we're gonna jump into the log wheels, still on the color tab, and we're gonna pretty much do the same colors into the highlights as yellows and into the shadows as teal. Just a little bit, just to enhance what we just did with the colors, pretty much. All right, this looks already pretty, pretty good, right? But how do we turn this into a proper film retro cinematic look? Easy. Da Vinci has already so many good, amazing, perfect 
looks built into it. So all we're gonna do is apply the look in the right way. And I find that the perfect way to apply these looks, it's pretty much take your image, make it log again, and apply the look. But how do we do that? So we're going to our RE conversion node. We're applying a CST and we're transforming our image from Rec 709 and we output it to RE log. So now, as you can see, we have our RE log looking footage. And now, if we go into our look node, we scroll into the film looks, which are pre loaded Da Vinci looks, and we go down to the Kodak 2383. You have three options the D55, D60, and D65. I personally, I think, enjoy more the D55 and the D60, but it's, it's really up to your likings. So let's pick the D60 for this example. And just by applying the look, pretty much everything we did before now is also including in what the look is. So we have this beautiful Kodak 2383, which is one of the most cinematic looks you can find. But with our little changes that we did before, and now it's looking very nice and very polished, but it's missing like the texture, it's missing the glow, the, the halation, the most important parts of a retro film look. So let's go back into the first node that we created, which was grain. And here we're gonna apply the grain. So look into effects and just type in grain and drop it and drag it onto your node. Now here there is so many different type of grains that you can choose up here. I personally really like the 16 millimeter 500T grain because it just looks nice. The texture is nice. It's not extreme. It's just one of my favorites. So then I apply that and I just change up the opacity. Usually around 0.5, it's very good, but you can play around with more grain if you like more grain or less grain if you like less grain. This image is looking crazy good already. I love it. So let's jump into the last final node, which is a halation and glow. Here, you could apply both effects on two different nodes, but I actually really like the elation effect that has also a glow tab under it. So let's apply the halation effect onto our node. And now here you have so many options you can play around with. Just don't go too crazy, but make sure the halation shows in your image. I usually like to play a bit with the U and the saturation and the spread, and I make it a bit obvious that there is like mistakes so it looks very retro and looks very film looking and then you can see the tab secondary glow right here so we're going to click on that and you're going to put up the strength and as soon as you do that you'll see a beautiful glow coming up with everything so here again play around with the strength the saturation and the spread of everything until you like it and uh, that's pretty much it you got your relation you got your glow your image you got your grain the colors are looking beautiful so everything is pretty much down by now. All you gotta do is adjust the colors, adjust the primaries, adjust everything to fit to your liking a bit more. By now, usually is where I go through each and every node and just double check that everything fits with the look that I'm going for. Sometimes I even desaturate a little bit just to give a bit more roughness to, to the film look and I add a bit more grain sometimes, but that's totally up to you. And that's it guys, we reached a cinematic film retro look using the intro all for free. There is a bunch of film emulation plugins out there that can speed up the process and you have different film looks already built into them, but this is the only way you can do it for free, straight into DaVinci, so take it. Also, I like to point out that everything you saw today was actually shot apart from, apart from this obviously it was actually shot on this helios 44 to 58 millimeter lens which is um, a pretty cool lens it's like one of the most famous vintage lens vintage lenses and uh, i just got it yesterday actually and i went out and shooting with this and i was like let's give it a shot since we're shooting for something retro i guess a vintage lens would have helped so yeah if you were wondering Huh. Anyway, if you're wondering, this didn't have um, a mist filter on, so I'm curious to see actually how the highlights looked in this. But we're going to talk about this lens in a different video, so if you did like this video, like and subscribe as always. I'll see you guys in the next video. 
hopefully you took something out of it and um, that's it it's almost eight o'clock i think i need a coffee and um some food because i am starving so again thanks for sticking around and i'll see you in the next video